Okay, in this third part, we're going to have a look at um, clefs, key signatures, and time signatures. Um, now, these are three very important considerations when uh, notating something, um, especially when working in logic, um, or indeed, uh, you know, just on paper. Um, and they all serve a purpose to make the music as easy to read as possible. Okay, uh, and if you're going to learn one thing, learn about these three things because uh, it will make your life a whole lot easier and the person who's reading the music. Now the first thing uh, to consider is the clef. Um, now the clef kind of helps you define uh, or it's relevant to the range of the instrument and you want to choose a clef um, that is going to enable the notes to sit um, very comfortably on the uh, staff uh, without having to use loads of ledger lines uh, which will be the lines that are above the staff and you'll see them appear um, in a little bit now what you're seeing here is a treble clef uh, or a G clef um, and you can see the note G here is on the second line and this goes through the little swirly part of the uh, treble clef hence the, um, it at one point being named the G clef um, but you'll probably notice the treble clef um, now the the scale I've got here is it's starting on C2 and it's fitting very comfortably into this um, uh, staff um, because the treble clef is in this range. Um, now it'd probably be a, a bad idea um, to present this uh, on a different kind of clef. Now there are kind of many clefs for you to choose from. Um, you know, representing this note in this range on a bass clef, if I just go up to here to instrument one, uh, style, uh, I can choose the kind of staff uh, that I want. And these are illogic presets. Um, you can create your own, and I'll show you how to do that a little la later on. Um, if I choose bass um, from here, you'll notice here the ledger lines start to appear. Um, now, for a start, the bass clef, um, this is F, um, this second line from the top, and it runs through these two dots here. Now, on the treble clef, this is a D, this line. So, you know, straight away you've got um, a problem that, of, you know, a, a musician that reads treble clef won't want to read something off a bass clef because all the notes are in a different place um, for a start. And also, it's just pretty unreadable, really, and it's going to get really out of control really fast. Um, so obviously, the treble clef is a is a good choice for us here. Now we have a few different um, treble clefs here. If I were to take all these notes and just transpose them up an octave, um, you can see here that the scale is now fitting on the top half of the staff, and I've got some ledger lines up here. Now, if my melody was an octave higher, I could choose um, a clef here or drag one in from here. And this is a, um, a treble clef that's an octave above um, <coughs> uh, the regular treble clef. And as you can see, now I've dragged that in. Uh, this represents a clef that's an octave higher. And you can see my notes are now fallen back down uh, to where they were. Um, you know, another bad a bad example of this would be to use uh, a treble clef that was an octave below, and you would see that now all our notes are, are freaking out again. There, you know, this is not good to read, um, so you're probably not going to want to do that. Uh, so let's go back to our regular treble clef and um, just put these down. There's another way you can do this uh, with this eight VA. Um, which basically, you know, tells the reader that the notes are uh, an octave above where they're re represented on the staff. Okay, um, so you can use that if you want to. Uh, let's just undo that. Grab all of these um, and take them down. So, you know, choosing the right clef, it's just all about you know, representing the notes in an easy to read fashion according to their range. Now then logic's quite intelligent for this. If you write a bass part into a um 
uh, region and the notes are very low, uh, Logic will be able to interpret these low notes and when you go to the score editor it will actually add a bass clef uh, for you. So it kind of does some of the work uh, for you there, um, but it's something to consider. Now next up um, we're going to have a key signature. Now my scale here is in C major um, and because C major has no sharps or flats there's no real need um, to have a key signature there you know that's kind of pretty simple stuff um, now if I were to let's say transpose this up to up a tone uh, so now we have a D major scale okay now you can see some sharps and f uh, some sharps have appeared on the staff okay and that is because D major has a D, E, and F sharp, uh, not an F natural, uh, a G, an A, a B, and a C sharp, not a C natural, um, and a D at the top there. Now then, uh, the point of key signatures is again to unclutter the staff and have it presented in the simplest way possible. And the simplest way to do this is to actually represent your sharps at the beginning of the line uh, so the player knows he's in a different key. Now you can add a key signature um, two ways. Uh, you can simply drag, um, you know, click on the uh, key signature part box here and then I could just drag uh, D major into this. Now you can see <coughs> that the um, C line here has a sharp on it and so does the F line and it's basically taken away the sharps here making this nice and easy to read and the reader will know it's D major okay so that's you know it's very important if you think you're going to score something out to actually make sure you have the right key signature otherwise you could get into a lot of trouble and I will show you an example of that. Let's take this down to C again. So no sharps or flats. Now then, if I were to raise these up a semitone, they're going to be in the key of C sharp major. Now C sharp major has seven sharps. Okay, now look what happens um, to this. Oh dear, it's all a bit confusing. Um, you also have a big no-no here, which is, you know, having a natural and um, a note of the same name as a sharp uh, in the scale. It all looks very, very confusing. Um, and, you know, you won't make any friends um, notating stuff out like this. So if you're in C sharp uh, major, here's another way to change your uh, key. Uh, here we have global tracks signature. And here you can see the letter C here. And if I just double click on that, I can change my key signature. And I'm just going to change this to C sharp major. Press OK. Now you can see my seven sharps here. And everything looks neat and tidy um, on the stave or the staff. OK, now conversely, you don't want to get your key signature wrong. If I transpose these back down one to C and I have a key signature of C sharp, uh, things are going to look even worse. Okay, get a load of that. Okay, we've got double sharps here. Um, and this is just uh, insane. Okay, so you're not going to want that. So let's go back up to here, click uh, on our key signature, change this back to C, and return to normality. Okay, now if you're not familiar with... Um, uh, key signatures again, you know, it's a great place to get information. Uh, Wikipedia, there, uh, key signature. Here we have the cycle of fifths here, uh, which is a very easy way to learn uh, what keys have sharps. Uh, you can see if we go round this wheel, um, G is a fifth away from C, so it has one sharp. D is a fifth away from G, it has two sharps. A. Uh, is a fifth away from D, three sharps, etc, etc. Um, so let's go back into logic here. Now, you know, you'll probably all be familiar with sharps. 
That is a sharp. Um, this is a flat, you know. I'm sure everybody knows this and it doesn't need explaining. Um, so if you have a, a C sharp um, in a scale here and you have another C um, that's a C natural, you'll see this natural sign here. So, you know, C exists on the same line or C sharp and C exist on the same line. If I were to just put this up to here. You know, even though these notes exist, uh, one is sharp and one is natural. Um, so you'll probably see that quite a lot if you have, you know, passing notes or just notes that are outside of a, a scale in a melody. Uh, don't be alarmed if you see uh, accidentals. And these are what these are called, uh, these sharps and flat signs. Um, so that's about that for key signatures. are very important. What I would say is the first thing to do actually when you make a song in Logic is make sure you have the right key signature. And that's normally going to be the first chord of the song or just the chord you know that the song wants to resolve to um so it could be any chord you know g minor you know base all your chord progressions in g minor you know g g minor f e flat major would be a typical uh, chord progression there okay so next up we have um time signatures and time signatures are important they tell you how many beats are in a bar um if you've written a bar, uh, song in 3-4, but your signature is 4-4, four, four, things are going to look very confusing uh, and will be very hard to count uh, with notation. So um, you can see here, if I change my uh, time signature in the toolbar to 3-4, you know, my part is four bars long. Um, so, you know, I'm getting three beats here and one beat left over. Um, so make sure you're in the right time signature. I'm sure everybody understands that. That's pretty rudimentary stuff. Um, but, you know, when you have songs that change signature a lot, um, this is very important. Uh, so we could, you know, have a four-bar sequence. And on bar two, um, we might have a bar of three, four. So Logic would have just insert that time signature for you. Okay, and that is almost it. The only other thing I want to show you is staff styles. Now, I've assigned a staff style to this part, uh, my treble style. Um, now, if I go to layout staff styles, uh, these are the settings for this preset. Um, and, you know, these a staff style is how you want to represent your staff. So you can choose which kind of clef it has on it. Um, you know, the size of the start of the notes, you know, if you're working on a big orchestral score, um, you'll probably want, um, you know, to have your staffs quite small so you can fit a lot on the page, uh, you know, and you can choose how, you know, the note heads are represented here. I've got them set to names. Um, you can have them set to normal, you know, or I just hide them completely. Okay, uh, it's it's a formatting thing again. Stem position, center. You can see the stems now hit the center of the notes. Um, now then, um, the clef. You have some other options here for guitar tab. Uh, if I change this to guitar tab, you'll see that now uh, the staff is actually turned into tab. Okay, um, and you know if you have drum notation. Here we have the percussion uh, clef here. Um, that's because percussion doesn't really usually have pitch, so uh, it doesn't really need a clef. Um, and that is about that, really. Um, like I say, Wikipedia's got some great um, information on it. Um, key signature, I would say, is the most important thing. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're just going to end up with a big old you know, nightmare, and this isn't good to read, so just changing that up there to C sharp makes everything nice and easy to read, um, and you should be sorted. So uh, next up, we are going to add some text um, to our song, and uh, see what happens.